Today, I want to talk about how the SEC has just been caught taking bribes. I want to talk about how this links into the SEC, to FTX, and even to AMC, but also what is happening to the shorts right now as a result of the collapse of FTX. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, Marty Party tweeted saying breaking news. SEC Councilman Berkowitz from the CFTC has just resigned after being found to have accepted bribes from Sam Bankman Fried. And as Darren Harper added, he said, I'm sure he's the only person to ever accept a bribe ever in the history of the CFTC and the SEC, which is obviously sarcasm. I wonder just how deep the corruption and the bribery runs inside the SEC, the DTCC and the CFTC. I wonder if every top level employee, potentially even including Gary Gensler, is accepting bribes from crypto companies and from Wall Street firms like Citadel. This article from the LA Times is titled and talks about how emails reveal Sam Bankman-Fried's courtship of federal regulators. It says before his mid-December arrest, cryptocurrency billionaire Sam Bankman-Fried repeatedly claimed that he was a responsible business leader who sought more regulation of cryptocurrency and wanted his industry to be part of the mainstream financial system. But now that the CFTC, the SEC and the Department of Justice are prosecuting the 30-year-old for fraud, the extensive professional relationships he cultivated with current and former federal regulators risk embarrassment for all involved. As the chief exec for FTX, a crypto exchange, Bankman Fried hired multiple former federal regulators who helped him connect with top officials at the CFTC, the agency that he hoped would be charged with regulating his industry. Many of Bankman Fried's top deputies were former regulators. Ryan Miller, FTX's general counsel, previously served as legal counsel directly to Gary Gensler, the then CFTC chairman who is now the chairman of the SEC. So Ryan Miller was promoted to FTX's head of general counsel and had previously worked directly with Gary Gensler. Therefore, obviously had a direct link to Gary, so the bribes may even stretch further than Berkowitz. And on top of that, Mark Wetgen, FTX's former head of policy and regulatory strategy and current director at LedgerX, an FTX affiliate, formerly served as the acting chairman and a commissioner of the CFTC. Dennis Keller, the president of Better Markets, say that those few emails show the CFTC had an open door policy to meet basically whenever FTX wanted to meet, including with the then acting chair. He said FTX hired former CFTC officials for the purpose, obviously, to access and influence the CFTC, aka to provide access and secret bribes. And that's obviously where FTX had a pending radical proposal to dramatically change the structure and operations of clearinghouses. Benham from the CFTC said over the past 14 months, we met 10 separate times in the CFTC office at their request, all in relation to um, this clearinghouse application. He said there were very, very strong feelings about this application and I felt I needed to be engaged as the chairman of the agency that met directly with FTX and Mr. Bankman Freed. Now, weirdly enough, that clearinghouse application was never approved, even though Sam Bankman Freed met with the head of the CFTC 10 separate times. You'd imagine that something could be approved after one individual meeting, but no, it took 10 separate meetings and they still couldn't get it figured out. Clearly, that was just 10 separate opportunities for Sam to bribe the CFTC and the SEC and God knows who else as well. And it wouldn't surprise me if the CFTC and the SEC and the DTCC are also taking additional bribes, not just from Sam at FTX, but from other crypto companies and from Wall Street companies like Citadel. But as Enables tweeted, he said after the FTX collapse, things are getting really interesting. We've just seen a new all-time high in borrowing costs from Stonker Tracker. The previous all-time high was a few months ago, directly after the collapse of FTX, reaching 104%. But now, so far, it's already at 114%. On top of that, you'll also remember that I showed you yesterday that borrowing rates at Ortex are also at an all-time high, well over 250%. And Rat Toy has explained perfectly why it makes no sense whatsoever at the moment to short AMC or even to continue keeping those short positions open. He said to short AMC right now, you have to put up 150% collateral and pay 114% minimum and on average 200% to borrow AMC shares. And on top of that, AMC is about to combine with Ape and perform a reverse split and therefore shorting AMC is about to get 1000% more expensive than that. For every $10 billion shorting AMC, they have to put up $15 billion in collateral and pay at least $10 if not $20 billion per year to continue shorting. 
And on top of that, you may have seen this article on Ken Griffin Lies that says 507 institutions failed to file 13 Fs on APE, but yet the SEC says absolutely nothing. It says, according to some clever wrinkled brains, 507 institutions failed to file 13 F reports on their APE holdings in violation of the SEC's reporting rules. In fact, only 29 funds filed 13 Fs on APE holdings, so around 94% of funds didn't even bother. He said 1.8 made an interesting point though, which is that they wouldn't have to report the receipt if they didn't hold the shares at the opening bell on the day of issue. However, if this was the case, then 99% of all institutional holders collectively coordinated to sell their shares on the same security at the exact same time. But yet on that day of release, there was 42 million FTDs and the price of APE actually rose from $6 up to $10. So again, it seems these funds on Wall Street have obviously bribed the SEC and have therefore not disclosed their APE holdings in their 13 Fs illegally, but as a result of the bribes, they've been let off the hook. But NFT Happiness believes that all the shorts are stuck and that it could all come to an end in January or February of 2023. They said right now there's a huge amount of FUD on all three stocks. On GameStop there's all kinds of FUD, on AMC there's the FUD between the yes and the no vote, and on Bed Bath & Beyond there's the FUD around the standstill agreement and the bond conversion. And she said how interesting that all of this happens just as we approach the two year anniversary of the January 2021 sneeze, just as the swaps have to be rolled again. Obviously these swaps have to be rolled, but this time around they can't use the FTX synthetics as false locates. And she predicts a massive increase in FUD as the January 2021 run-up was the GameStop main bomb with a number of other small bombs. But the January 2023 run-up will be the GameStop thermonuclear bomb, an AMC thermonuclear bomb, a Bed Bath & Beyond thermonuclear bomb, and many other smaller bombs as well. To avoid a catastrophic January 2023 explosion, the short hedge funds and the Fed have to find a counterparty willing to take the risk of the total return swaps, but there's no parties willing to take on this risk as they're all down so heavily this year on their long positions. So either they have to find a new way to do the crime without the FTX synthetics, or find somebody else to hold the swaps, or we get the run up. She said that right now prices are at the lows because they have complete control of the price and they're desperate to get retail to capitulate and sell their shares. And if they don't, they will end up being liquidated as they won't be able to meet their margin requirements. And therefore the days are counting down for the shorts if they can't find somebody to take the risk of their total return swaps. And that is also going to compound, as I said yesterday, with these 400,000 currently out of the money call options on AMC. Obviously, as these calls start going in the money, these market makers have to hedge for all of these call options, buying tons and tons of AMC shares. Obviously, buying tons of AMC shares will push the price up, causing more people to buy more calls, causing these market makers to continue hedging for even more call options. And when you combine that with the fact they won't be able to find another counterparty to reset their married and divorced puts, those will have to be closed out as well. Selling or closing out of those put options and closing out of their synthetic shares while buying AMC shares to hedge for those calls will cause the squeeze. And it seems the DTCC is trying to deny all plausibility of knowledge by allowing these hedge funds to remove their QSIPs from their short positions. 741 Trade tweeted saying effective January 1st, the DTCC is no longer providing an itemized bill for client short positions due to a cyber security risk. It says when clients incur short positions, the DTC imposes a hold of 130% of the value of the short position until the short position is covered. Historically, the DTC has sent an email to the client informing them of the short position. The email notification contains the security description, QSIP number, and the quantity of the short. But now, after December 31st, 2022, aka from the 1st of January, the DTC won't be sending that notification and won't be including the QSIP or security identifier and the quantity on that email. Therefore, the DTC can deny any knowledge of existence of giant short positions in individual stocks. They're not going to be naming the stocks, they're not going to be naming the number of short positions held, and they're not even going to be sending an email to remind clients of their short positions. I believe the reason why the DTC is doing this is because they're currently scared on just how bad the current shape of the market really is. As finance Lancelot tweeted, he said the equity put call ratio jumped to 2.38 today. He believes the markets are going to tank as soon as possible. He said we've never seen anything like this before. He said these daily violent swings are going to break the market. 
Dating all the way back to 2007, we have seen increases and decreases in this put call ratio. Back in 2008, we saw 1.4 puts for every call held. But right now, this record is being absolutely smashed with 2.3 put options held for every single call. Many people right now are lining up for the market to crash and trying to hedge with put options, but obviously many of these funds are already down 40, 50 or 60% so far this year. But as more and more people are lining up buying put options, you would expect the market to continue crashing over the next few weeks. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.